Hi traders, this is Cynthia of Day Trade Forex and I'd like to thank you for being interested in my Green Tomatoes for Forex Newbies trading system and I'd like to welcome you to my training tutorials and in this first training tutorial we need to teach you how to place your first trade in the MT4 platform and we also need to show you how to place your stop loss and your take profit and also a trailing stop so I've got the basic green tomatoes for newbies template up on my MT4 trading platform and now we need to show you how to open your very first trade and the trading system itself gives you lots of color-coded indicators which tell you what the direction of the trend is and that's the main window here and we trade only when all of the colors are coordinated and the same so if you have mixed colors like right in here in this area that's a no trade area so you wait for everything to turn one color or the other either tomato red or green color so this is your main window with your candles this is a SAR dot this, these are you have two trend lines one fast and one slow and we're waiting for a clear trend to develop so that we can buy or sell however at this time of day it might not be possible to have a clear trend so I'm just going to show you how to buy or sell and take the set the take profit and stop loss and trailing stop we're going to do that even though the conditions are not really ideal for a trade the reason is if you look at this last candle it's a tomato red candle the SAR dot is tomato red so this is all telling you that the price is on a downtrend but if you let your eye drop down to this middle window this is a volatility window that uses the RSI indicator RSI stands for relative strength indicator and it tells you if the buying pressure is stronger or if the selling pressure is stronger and we have levels which are on the chart in this window and there's oversold levels which are the 20 and the 30 line then we have the middle line which is a trigger line which is a 50 percent RSI level and then we have overbought RSI levels at 70 and 80 percent and then the colored RSI line itself will be tomato red for selling pressure or green for buying pressure so in this instance price is oversold down at the 30 percent level but it's green and turning up but we would not place a buy trade until the green RSI level touches and pushes past the 50 percent level that will tell us that we have sufficient momentum in the trade to back up the trend and right now the trend is down in the main window but the RSI indicator the colored line is green so that's a mixed signal right there that tells me that there's no clear trend the very bottom window is the multi time frame zero lag MACD and the purple line is the zero baseline and the yellow line is the four hour trend so if I'm going to be interested in placing a buy trade this yellow line needs to be above the purple line and you can see here when the four hour trend went above the zero baseline at the same time just a little bit later the green colored RSI line pushed past the 50 percent level in the main window we had the green arrow alert and the SAR dot turned lime green this was our entry right here for this very long candle this would have been a perfect entry I'm in a 30 minute chart I normally trade out of 30 minute and one hour charts and so this was just a perfect buy entry right here 
and everything aligned, everything was perfect. And now it looks like the price is in a little bit of a pullback because we have all of the candles that have turned tomato red. The RSI turned tomato red and fell down to the 30% RSI level, which is oversold. So price is actually oversold at this point. And this yellow zero lag four hour line is hugging the purple baseline so that tells me there's no trend when the yellow line is flat with the purple line there's absolutely no trend so right now there is absolutely no trend there's no reason for me to buy or sell but for this training video I have to place a buy or a sell trade just to show you how to do it so I'm going to do that right now I think I'll just since all the candles are red I think that I'll place a sell trade just to show you how to do it and then I'll show you how to place your stop loss your take profit and your trailing stop so just for demonstration purposes I'm going to place a sell trade even though with these trade conditions right now normally I would not be trading at all so we're approaching 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time which is this dashed period separator line right here and typically I don't trade at this time of the day approaching 5 p.m. it's 3 p.m. Central so that's 4 p.m. Eastern so we're one hour away from hitting 5 p.m. Eastern Time and I never trade I try to be out of my trades no later than 12 or 1 or 2 p.m. and I don't initiate trades after 3 p.m. Central or 4 p.m. Eastern that's right now so so normally I would not be trading this but I have to show you how to do this so let's pretend we're gonna put on a sell trade so here in the top left corner you have the sell and buy button and you can make it appear and disappear by you see this little arrow right here to the left of name for this chart this is the pair that I'm in so if you click this little arrow this little arrow it makes the buy and sell button go away but if you click it again it makes it come back so we're gonna take a sell trade and so I'm gonna click sell and it placed my trade just like that and chose 0.02 and that's a safe trade lot size for this size of account now we need to set our take profit and stop loss so the only way to do that is to left mouse click right here where all of the values are and then right mouse click and choose modify or delete so we can see that the trade is going down and we can see that you have modify order here the problem with the MT4 platform is it uses points it used to use pips but now everything is points although up here the values are pips so it's confusing the MT4 platform is not consistent this way the MT4 platform is the best platform around for trading Forex but it's still not a perfect platform so just so you know that the modify order is in points so when it says 200 points that's really 20 pips so that means that if I were to click copy this this is my stop loss so it would place my stop loss 20 pips above what my price is and a 20 pip stop loss is fairly tight but um, you can set this for anything you like actually if you click the little drop down arrow you can see that what I had chosen was 20 but I had to add an extra zero because they fool you this way if you left it at 20 if you just left it at 20 that's actually a two pip stop loss you're gonna get stopped out so quick faster than you can blink your eye so that's how they fool you and cheat you and they all do that 
doesn't matter what broker it is they're all the brokers that use mt4 platform this is the mt4 platform so you have to add an extra zero so that your stop loss now will be 20 pips and then click copy as now if you want to change this you can actually just go like that and type it in and then click copy as and that'll change your stop loss the other way you can change your stop loss is to click here and it'll raise it just a little bit at a time that's okay too so now you have your stop loss around 20 or 30 pips and now you want to set your take profit so the problem again is here you have all of these different little you know if you did that you would <laughs> I don't even think your trade could stand a chance of one second being closed out so you have to be smarter than what the brokers think you are so you have to add an extra zero now I don't necessarily want a 20 this would be a 20 pip take profit and then so if that's okay with me then I would just click okay and it copies it so now down here it tells you that it's going to modify your order and it's going to make your stop loss this value and your take profit this value but the way I like to trade is I like to trade with a minimum of a risk to reward ratio of two to one that means I like my reward to be double what my risk is the stop loss is my risk when I place this stop loss order I'm telling it that I'm willing to lose 300 pips if you're not willing to lose 300 pips then you're gonna have to change this you can change it by typing in like that 250 and then click copy as and it's going to change your stop loss if you're not willing to lose 225 pips 250 points is 25 pips say you're only willing to lose 200 pips change it and click copy as and then it changes your stop loss again so your risk is always the stop loss that's the amount that you're willing to lose you have to be willing to lose that amount and you don't want your stops to be too tight because you don't want to be stopped out too soon okay so I like to trade using a risk to reward ratio of 2 to 1 or 1 to 2 meaning that my risk is one thing but I want my reward which is my take profit I want that to be double at least double and I don't want what's called a one-to-one -one risk to reward because that would mean that my stop loss at 200 points would be the same as my take profit at 200 points that's a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio you can't grow your account using one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio you need to always make sure that your take profit is double what your risk is so my take profit needs to be double of my stop loss so if my stop loss if I want it to be 20 pips or 200 points then I need to make this 400 at the very minimum sometimes in a very strong market I'll make it a 3 to 1 risk to reward 1 to 3 risk to reward ratio which means that my reward or my take profit is three times what my risk is or stop loss but for now let's just make it 1 to 2 risk to reward so my stop loss is 20 point 20 pips my take profit is 40 pips so I've clicked both of those and now I can click modify and now my stop loss and my take profit is set at a risk to reward ratio of one to two so my risk is a value of one and my the ratio is my reward is two or double my risk now we need to set a trailing stop and so I'm gonna right mouse click in here again and I'm gonna click trailing stop and again you see that it's all in points but if you use any of these even the 50 points that's just five pips that means if the trade goes against you five pips you're gonna get stopped out 
you may or may not be in profit at that point so I think a five pip trailing stop is too tight so I click custom and I'll change this to 150 points which is a 15 pip trailing stop and that's a little bit better so in a slow market a 15 pip trailing stop is okay in a fast market you can change it to 20 or 200 points this, this is 20 pips or even make it trail 25 pips which is 250 points so the wider your trailing stop the higher these numbers are the looser it's going to trail and it means that it can go against you more pips without stopping you out too quickly one of the things as a newbie trader is that we're so afraid of losing money that we set a trailing stop or an initial stop loss so tight we're so afraid of losing money that we set our stop loss or trailing stop too tight and if price goes against us even a little bit we can get stopped out so easily often then if we got the entry correct but it experiences what we call a little bit of a pullback or retracement that's normal price action and you don't want to get stopped out on a small retracement or pullback your trade needs breathing room and the only way you can give it breathing room is to give it a stop loss and trailing stop a wide enough setting so that it doesn't trail too tight so that you don't get stopped out too quickly because then you have what's called a lost opportunity and you can always re-enter your trade again if you think that the trend direction and momentum is still correct but every time you place a new trade you incur a brand new risk so it's better just in the beginning to let your trail be loose enough with bigger numbers like this and make sure that your trailing stop is loose enough now we created a 20 pip trailing stop we created a 20 well actually we created a let's see price is at 33 we're down seven pips 128.40 so we only have a 17 pip stop loss i thought we created a 20 pip but i guess price moved and so now we only have a 17 pip stop loss so maybe you don't want a 25 pip trailing stop maybe just a 20 pip trailing stop hard to say at this point but just choose now that you understand how this works and why you don't want you don't want for instance 100 points which is only a 10 pip trailing stop that's too tight price reverses on you 10 pips you get stopped out so make it at least a 15 pip trail which is 150 points and then click OK now it makes this it it's going to start trailing and you'll see it follow the trail 15 pips behind the price so as the price moves down this is going to move this the trail down so this is the way to set your your buy or sell trades and your initial stop loss and take profit and then your trailing stop these are the three things you need to practice at to get good at it so that this becomes easy for you to do so that's how you place your trade and modify your stop loss and take profit in and choose your trailing stop and there's nothing really else to do at this point if you want a different chart then this is just showing you how to do it on one chart if you want to place another trade you're going to have to go up here click create new chart say that you want to trade something that might be a little bit different choose the Aussie US dollar apply the template take a look at the chart and you can see that right now well approaching 5 p.m.
price is pretty flat you can see how price is very flat now you can open and close your chart by just dragging left mouse click dragging on the right hand side because sometimes you do need to open up your chart so you can see the price action see now it's open you can see that we had a big bull run here earlier this morning well we're in a 15 minute chart so when you create a new chart it opens in a 15 minute chart but you can see the bull run the pullback another little tiny bull run another little pullback and the market really is very flat and if you need to check your range of your market just use your crosshairs like that the middle window is the value for your number of pips for the range so it says 160 that means 16 pips that's another way to read the range for your crosshair so the middle range is 16 pips and the number before that means that from the time that you put your crosshair on the chart to the bottom of this candle that's four candles so that's telling you and the numbers on the right are just telling you basically what the price was at the bottom of this candle so right now that's not a tradable pair although the trend may be going down but I like to see the RSI cross the 50 percent line the H4 the four hour yellow line is kissing the zero baseline but it hasn't crossed it but you have a tomato red candle and a tomato red SAR dot so chances are that this might be going down in the near future so I would keep my eye on it and up here you can change it to a 30 minute chart because that's really the minimum chart that I like to look at and then you get a pop-up alert for the candle the EMA the candle is the EMA signal alert and it's telling you that the candle is tomato red and that's the tomato red candle is a sell pressure candle it means that the trend is down if the candle was green it would mean that the trend is up but this little alert just told you that this candle says the trend is down but we have mixed signals so we have a green SAR dot but a tomato red candle we have a green RSI line that's below the 50 percent level so even though the RSI line is green it's below the 50 percent RSI level so the selling pressure is stronger and you can see that the four hour yellow line is flat and hugging the purple zero baseline so that tells you there's absolutely no trend so at this point in this time of day of course there's no trade possible and this little message tells you that the SAR dot well it was it's green now but it, when this popped up the SAR dot must have turned red so everything right now is just in a hold pattern basically I just wanted this video to show you how to place your buy or sell trades and I think we did that I showed you how to create another chart and apply the template and change the time frame so this is your very first training video of how to place trades and you just need to keep practicing the more screen time you put in the more trades you place in the beginning don't be concerned if they're losing or winning trades just in the very beginning you need to get the mechanics down of how to actually place your trades place your stop loss take profit and your trailing stop this is how you do it using the very quick button now you can see here my trade was placed at 0.02 I could change this by clicking this I can raise the micro the micro trade lot size so if I keep clicking this I can increase my lot size these are micro lots but if I want to make the lot size smaller I click this little arrow so it was set on 0.02 which is okay for this small account however I actually could be trading with 0.05 on this small account 
So this is how you determine the lot size for your sell button or your buy button. I forgot to say that in the beginning. I should have said that. But basically you never want to trade more than 5% of your account size. So your equity, you don't want to spend all of your money. You don't want to have all of your money tied up in a bunch of trades, especially when you don't know what you're doing. In the beginning, just have one trade at a time going, maybe two, because you're not going to know how to read the charts and follow the price action. And if your trade goes against you, you're going to get nervous. But in the beginning, just practice the mechanics of placing your trades. Use no more than 5% of your account balance or equity. Actually, 2%, even 1% is okay. 5% is still pretty aggressive and never trade 10% of your account size or equity because that's just your lot sizes are going to be too big and you can lose your account too easily if too many trades go against you in a row you definitely want to be conservative with your lot sizes especially for the first couple of months while you're practicing and yes I said months <laughs> this is like taking a college class and you have to study and practice and the more screen time you spend the faster you're going to improve because in the beginning you're going to have mostly losing trades but at this point don't be concerned with how many trades you lose how many trades you win if you learn how to follow the chart and learn what these values mean and you understand that everything is color coordinated especially for the top window and and the middle window these colors must be coordinated you need the big lime green sar dot and the big green arrow and all the candles and the trend lines to be green before you even consider a trade you need your RSI line to be green and above the 50 RSI percent level. And the very important window, really, actually, the most important window is this bottom window because it's showing you the four hour trend against this zero baseline. So when it crosses up, the trend is up. When it goes flat like this, the trend is pretty much flat. You can see these small candles. Price is going up. But in a four hour chart, it's not until right about here where the volatility picks up, the momentum picks up. And as the price spikes, you can see the four hour line turn up. And then look at how it goes into a very tight range. After a big move like this, it's really normal for price to go into a small range. It goes flat, meaning there's no more momentum. There, it's just ranging in a very small range. We call that range bound or consolidation or resting. After a big move, the price needs to rest. And then it can go down as a retracement and then go back up. But price can never just keep going up, 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 up in a straight line. It goes up for a little while, sometimes with a big push, a big long candle like this, and then it'll go flat. It rests for a while. It consolidates then it'll retrace it'll pull back it has to because it can't go any higher unless it retraces it's just the nature of price action then it can go up again but it might not push up so strongly this is a small range again so the big price action was right around here and if you look at this candle where the price really took off that's at 4.30 according to my broker what time that was in terms of eastern time okay 430 for my broker was 9 30 p.m. so the Aussie the Aussie pairs the AUD Australian dollar cross pairs can be tradable during the Asian session this is the Tokyo session this is 5 p.m. Eastern when the Tokyo Asian session starts and the Australian dollar and the cross pairs can actually be pretty volatile but usually nothing starts until 9 p.m. so 
I don't get too excited about trading much of anything until around 9 p.m. Eastern. So you can take a look at some of the Aussie cross pairs and um, there's a few other, the yen cross pairs, anything that has to do with New Zealand dollar, Australian dollar, or the yen does better in the Asian Tokyo session. And then we go into the London session. The Australian dollar doesn't move a lot in the London session, but the pound pairs do move a lot in the London session. So each trading session has its own pairs that move more than others and in the basic green tomatoes for newbies the trading system itself I've created what's called profiles so we have the different trading sessions at 5 p.m. Eastern starts the Tokyo Asian session so I've created a profile that has the best moving pairs for the Asian Tokyo session so as a beginner you don't have to try and figure that out. I've already done it for you. You just trade out of the profiles. I'll show you the profiles in another training video. Then we have the Frankfurt session, which is the European session, and usually the Euro pairs trade better. Then we go into the London session, and the London pairs trade better. And then we go into the New York session, and the US cross pairs usually trade better. So I've created profiles if you purchase the basic green tomatoes for newbies you'll have those profiles that come with your template so when you download the trading system the profiles are in the template at that point I'll show you how to access the profiles so you can start using them makes it really easy for beginners because there are 28 currency pairs you can choose from that's too many for a beginner to even know what to begin to do with. So I've created the profiles for each of the four trading sessions just for you to make it easy for you. But that's part of the basic green tomatoes for newbies when you purchase the basic system. So that's it for now. You've learned how to place your trades and modify them and just a few other little tidbits. And if you purchase the basic green tomatoes for newbies, you'll get the profiles, you'll get the template fully loaded with all of these indicators. You'll get lots more training videos, a lot of training videos and screenshots and explanations. And you're welcome to join the Facebook group where you can ask questions. So if you have any kind of question about the trading system, if you post a screenshot that helps us, we like screenshots and then everybody can see what you're seeing. I think that's very important. And ask your questions and I'm in there, I'll help you, I'll answer you, but there's other people that are in there that have been trading for longer than you and they can help you. So there's always going to be somebody to help you. So thanks again for watching and if you purchase the basic green tomatoes for newbies we'll see you on the inside in the PDF for the video training and in the Facebook group for live help if you need it questions and answers. So thanks again for watching and have fun practicing on your new free demo account. Just practice practice practice. <laughs> thanks. Enjoy. Thanks for watching.